left field, which is the martial world, if you like. Think not in terms of martial arts or even martial sport, which is great. Think more in the, in more reality. If you cannot avoid de escalate the situation and it's about to become physical, your best chance for success is to go first. Go first with the most, you'll come out the best. But in order for any of that to happen, you've got to give yourself the green light in the head. You've got to get your head right. Lee, how are you, brother? I'm all right, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, good to make me uh, make your acquaintance. Yeah, even if it is only virtual. Yes. Again, that's we're we're going to come on and talk about this sort of nonsense. I'm 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 sure. Um, I was looking at your stuff on the internet earlier. You look like the world's hardest man. Is um, am no, I puppy dog, mate? Me puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not just about being able to handle yourself it's about being able to control your mind isn't it i think it all comes down to that because you know if you can control control your thoughts on a regular basis become a master of your thoughts you can control your feelings and if you control your feelings that's your entire state of being so i think that's very important yeah it's you... not so much what goes on around us i mean although that's you know horrendous enough but it really comes down to how you respond to it and that it really comes down to getting control of you and how you think do you know what I mean right so within my field which is the martial world if you like think not in terms of martial arts or even martial sport which is great think more in the in more reality so we're in a dangerous world which creates the need for certain things well the extreme end of the self-protection scale, if you like, incorporates what's been known to be come, come to be known as combatives. And basically combatives are uh, countermeasures for violence. That's what they are. And they're like the black sheep of the family under the martial art umbrella. They're the one you want to let off the lead only when you need him. Do you understand? Because combatives are designed for real threat to life. So if there's a, a level 10 threat where I could face death, you know, I'm either going to get maimed or dead. So there's a disparity. Multiple assailants against one person. Person is armed, you are unarmed. Stronger, larger, aggressive male against the smaller person or a woman. Now what we're seeing is multiple armed assailants against somebody that's got nothing. So real potential threat to life situations which require drastic measures. That's what I'm known for. I'm known for teaching on a physical and more importantly, an emotional conditioning sense, how to deal with violence. My credentials come from 42 years of training within martial methods, if that matters. So anything from Chinese, Japanese, Okinawan, Filipino, Indonesian, Sila, fucking uh, Western, anything and everything. I've been all over the globe trained with anyone who's anyone. Very fortunate. Right? But my real education for violence came from my introduction to it from the age of six, where I had one of the most abusive upbringings that you can imagine. So much so that I eventually left at the age of 11. I just fucking left with the clothes I was stood in and about two pound notes in my pocket. And I managed to find some similar like-minded kids. And back in them days, you could live in a squat. So if you could get into a house without fucking or an apartment or a flat, Without damaging the door and change the lock, you had squatters' rights for a year. So there was ways of doing things, and you know you you could like set up a, a social security claim for bed and breakfast and, and stuff like that. You could just about scrape by, but on the whole, it was hard, and you'd have to rob to eat. So you know I brushed shoulders with some of the worst people, if you like, right? I got involved with a gang at an early age, and um, et cetera, et cetera. Fast forward somewhat from there, I got involved with football violence um, and, and various other things. And then at 19 years old, I went on the doors. 
um, to, to earn some extra money from the job I was already doing. Now, I trained from the age of 10, 11 years old, I started training and I've never stopped. I'm now nearly 53. So my training never stopped. So my martial training, if you like, was the saving grace for me. It was the thing that kept me on a path. Because I come to a crossroads where I could have gone this path or that path, and this path where it was dead or prison, and this path was the one I chose, right? And I, I, I knew violence. I knew it from domestic violence point of view. I knew it from getting bullied to fuck at school. I knew it from fighting in the street within gangs. I knew it fighting on the terraces within football. I knew it fighting on the doors. I knew violence well. I knew the predator. And I had a martial background. Now, the majority of people within the martial background don't know the predator. They didn't have that upbringing. So I did. So I was fortunate. So I could recognize immediately within the martial world what was missing. And I met like-minded people that also did the same that helped me forward. You know, people like Jeff Thompson, etc. But... I become known for understanding predatory behavior. And if you have knowledge on what the animal does, you can develop countermeasures to deal with the same because knowledge is power and knowledge dispels myths. So the most people go to these Krav Maga things or any type of self-protection, they go to learn a physical skill set and they think that that's gonna allow them to deal with violence. But it's only part of the equation. The most important part of the equation is getting your fucking head right. Uh, so you need a, an analysis of self-awareness. First of all, you need to analyze, well, there's a real threat in the, in the world. There's a high probability with the years that we have left that you could find yourself in a level 10 threat situation where you could die. And you want that self-awareness a little further. Well, how do you stand right now in an emotional sense in terms of your capability to keep it together and deal with that? Majority of people are falling apart like a paper condom even though they've been training in this and this and this and this, which tells you the physical aspect's not enough. So I teach the emotional conditioning, which is then fused to the physical skill set and is then pressure tested, which takes you to a much higher degree of plausibility in terms of success. There's no guarantees, but it takes you much. So that's my field and that's the background that I went through to get there. So I've been through the shit mill. I've been touched by malevolence. So I know it. I know the dark which I am primarily a benevolent soul, you know? you know? I love my children, I love my, my, I love nature, I care about the people I care about. But, you know, I've got no time for fucking fools. Well, see, um, I've done a bit of door work. I won't profess I've got any particular type of skill other than my, um, my charm, I, I would say. Yeah, you've got to have a chat. I've got a chat as well. That got me through a lot. Yeah, that's... Um, but can you give us some examples? Because I'm sure people at home will be dying to know some of the scrapes you got got into. Oh, what, what, in a physical sense, you mean? Yeah, what, did you ever, you know, get a load of lads pile on you on the door? Oh, or fucking hell, yeah, it's all part of it, isn't it? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about one. And so a lot, a lot of people talk about teaching, when they teach self-protection methods, they are quite often they're teaching what's been shown to them. And the person that got shown that is teaching what was shown to them. And basically there's regurgitation of the pellet until someone somewhere did something, but it wasn't quite what they said it was. You know what I mean? Well, I don't, my teaching comes from principles, not techniques. So everybody that's had similar experience will come to similar conclusions. So if you cannot avoid de-escalate the situation and it's about to become physical, your best chance for success is to go first. Go first with the most. You'll come out the best. So hit first and keep attacking until there's nothing left to fight about. So we never got a chance to take part. Preemption. That will give you the highest probability of success. And that strategy comes from criminality. That strategy comes from warfare. You know? First, with the most, is the best. So I'll give you an example of that. I threw out somebody in a club. He got irritated. He come back with his three uncles. They're all connected, um, pikey family. And they followed me into the toilet towards the end of my shift. And I saw, as I took off my clip-on tie, went and washed my hands and everything, I see him come in. So one of them barred the door. And the other two, I think it was three total, one outside the door as well. 
um, come to give me whatever, right? When we broke a bottle against the wall, so I'm facing multiple armed assailant now. It's a big chance to uh, <laughs> to fall apart if you don't keep it together. Yeah, so you really find out about yourself. Bearing in mind, I've had inoculation to similar situations, but these cunts wanted to end me. And to cut a long story short, the first with the most never failed me there. You know, I blitzed the first cunt that come near me, used him, as fuck, threw him into the other one, picked up the bowl, fucking smashed it across his fucking head and done the fucker holding the door shut. And did I get out of that relatively unscathed? Relatively unscathed, yes. Did I get out there with nothing on me? Fuck no. You know, there are lumps and bumps all over me the next day that I didn't feel in the moment. But what I learned about myself is, is that you put me as a cornered animal, I fight like a fucking banshee because I must go home. So that single experience, although I'd had many others, triggered more adrenaline in me than most, simply because you know, I thought this was it. And I embraced it. You know, I just laid my life at their feet and fought my way out. So I would say the biggest lesson is, although yes, you've got to become physically competent, you need to be capable, learn to it fucking hard, ferociously hard, and take the tactic of doing that first before he does it. But in order for any of that to happen, you've got to give yourself the green light in the head. You've got to get your head right. So find out through self-awareness, even if you're a placid type of person, what do I really want to live for? Well, I want to live for doing what I do. I love doing what I do, so it's not work. Talk you see in over 40 countries, I've got brothers all over the world. I want to see them again. I love my wife, I love my dog, I love my kids, I love my, you know, I love life. That's why I want to live. So what would you be willing to fight for to protect that? What would you be willing to die for to protect that? And what, if anything, would you be willing to kill for to protect that? So you've got to have a belief system. You've got to work out what would I fight for? What would I not fight for? I wouldn't fight over a parking space. I wouldn't fight because fight she looked at me girlfriend. I wouldn't fight because she spilled me fucking drink, right? I'd only fight if I was a corn and animal when people were going to suffer if I didn't. And then if I give myself that green light, I'll fight till there's nothing left to fight about. Your fucking dead ancestors will remember me. You know, and that's basically where it stands. It comes down to the willingness. If you want to, if I say, what are the two ingredients? Learn to it fucking hard. Mm. And then give yourself the green light to do it when you need it. But you know, um, only when you need it. <laughs> what don't give you like address away, obviously, but what part of the country are you in roughly? Oh, everyone knows where I am. It's on the it's on the internet. So I'm in the south of the UK, towards Southampton area. Okay. I live in the New Forest. But the, um, I, the, yeah, that's where I'm based. But there's, there's UC outlets and schools all over the world. So urbancombatives.com or urbancombatives online will give you all the information that you need. We've got a massive YouTube channel, Urban Combatives, all free material. And if you're interested in more of the esoteric type stuff, like I was talking about before, which is the direction of Peaceful Warrior, then you see Peaceful Warrior. It's a YouTube channel. You can have a look on there. You've had a, uh, like, probably like myself, you've had a few challenges over the years, shall we say. Um, what the school of life's not, isn't it? Yeah. Was there, a was there a particular point, Lee, where you become, like, an enlightened person as opposed to living in the Matrix? Oh, yeah. Quite recent, to be honest with you. I mean, anybody that knows me within my field will know that the kind of awakening that you're talking about really for me took place 2019 the beginning of all this situation and um yeah i to be honest i mean i'm a street kid i left home at school when i was 12 years old i got involved in gangs and football violence growing up and uh the street was where I you know, was brought up pretty much. You know, I used to rob to eat. I've been both sides of the coin. I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say, you know, it's necessary to live. But what that taught me was an education and it taught me how to use my instincts and trust them. And I know when I'm being sold a crock of bollocks. I know when something is wrong. 
And I, I sussed this scandemic right from the fucking start. So that was the beginning of my awakening and it encouraged me to research certain things. Now people say, oh, they researched, they don't fucking research properly. You've got to look at everything. You've got to research, cross-reference, find commonality. And oh, then no. you... Keep talking. You, you um, then decipher for yourself based on critical thinking and logic in sync and also what it feels like to you to sort the wheat from the chaff. And by doing that, I uh, was awakened to a lot of what's going on, let's say, without you know going into it too much. But the few that control the many, as it were. And that took me down the, the, the proverbial rabbit hole where I've got to be honest, I found things that I think really disturbed me big time. To such a point now where it could confirm, I mean, I always knew that there was no, um, uh, boundaries, if you like, to the depths of the disparity that human nature is capable of. I know what humans are capable of. And, you know, I just thought there's such fucking dark in the world. There's got to be some light. So I started, you know, looking at other things also. Now, nothing to do with religion. I'm not a religious man at all. I'm not an atheist, but I'm not a religious man at all. Religion was man written for their own requirements. But I am a very spiritual soul. I've always believed that there's higher uh, source, if you like. So I kind of took that, that route. And then around the uh, 21st of December, which was the uh, winter solstice, I was in uh, Glastonbury, very nice place up in a place called Tour, which had a monument. And I was there for the you know, supposed planetary alignment where Jupiter lined up with Saturn and we're supposed to have an awakening in, in this, this era, this period in time is the time of Aquarius, which is the time of knowing. And it, it, there was supposed to be some shift, some vibrational shift. Now, of course, you know, geoengineered the fucking weather, so you couldn't see anything. But those couple of days that passed that period, which is, you know, the winter solstice, I felt different in myself. I felt somewhat um, more intuitive and in tune with my intu intuitive self. And you could you can put it down to they say so you've got an intuitive third eye and you know, we have it it's it's a fact and mine you might say metaphorically opened around the twenty third of December where I just felt a sense of knowing that there is so much fucking more to us than this three D matrix is made out and that with our awakening come, all of a sudden it's just like the law of attraction. I'm you know, directed to the right resources, to the right people, which confirm that kind of thing. And there's many of us that are awake, you know, not just awake to the situation that's going on, but also are somewhat enlightened to the fact that there's more to us than has been made out since our indoctrination at school, you know? And that's basically where I am with it. And such a, to such an extent, I mean, my career uh, is all self-protection, combative-based for military law enforcement, primarily civilians. So, I, you know, I've all my life, full 43rd year now, I'm 53 years old, I started when I was 10. And uh, all of my life, I've studied the dark arts, you know. Mm -hmm. I've studied martial methods, and I had come from a very fucking harsh upbringing where my first introduction to violence was very early, six years old. There's a reason I left home by the age of 11, 12 years old, run away for fuck all. And, you know, and it carried on, and, you know, my whole um, life has been geared around perfecting violence, understanding it, and knowing how to deal with it. Counter violence, you might call it. So it's dark. There's no front and out of back. I mean, the motivation that drove me was I didn't want people to go through what my upbringing was. I didn't want to go my own family to go through what my upbringing was. You know, I'm fucked if my kids were ever going to get bullied at school or hurt at home. It just wasn't going to happen. So <clears throat> it started 
along the lines of just try, always striving to do something for other people, striving to, to help people be, become confident in, in taking care of themselves. But the personal protection or physical self-protection part of it is just a vehicle. You know, it could have been anything else that I was teaching. <laughs> well, it, it was the vehicle, but it's a dark vehicle nonetheless. So I always questioned myself, you know, and I always knew that, you know, inside I had good heart, good skin. You know, I'm fucking, I'm, I have empathy and I, am, I, I love nature, I love animals, I always love those things. So I knew that although I've got I'm very capable of sociopathic traits when I need them on a fucking switch, that, that's not who I am. You know, there's a depth, much more depth. There's no front and out back. So um, my awakening, which came into this, which was after 20 years of establishing urban combatives or UC, you will now see it start to take a steer again because there's another sister channel that I have to urban combatives, which is Path to the Peaceful Warrior. And it talks about candidly, you know, these these things we just spoke about here there's many clips on there which is uh, so this, this section is divided it's basically it's about non-physical personal protection and that will incorporate um uh, you know strength fitness and conditioning diet nutrition supplementation methods of well-being but it will also include esoteric work spiritual well-being so we look at meditation visualization, forest bathing, all the walks or talks that I take are in the forest environment. I go to the forest every day or the beach. You know, barefoot grounding, you know, cold wash, cold shower therapy, because during all this fucking bullshit, they've not talked once about our God-given immune system. Oh. God give us, you know, through, and has seen us through many, many, many disasters. So... Uh, our immune system, there's so many things that we can do and they don't even fucking talk about it. In fact, they suppress it. So the constant fear mongering and the bombarding of you know, negativity is all part of a design to keep you in the fight or flight response. They want to make people fearful. That's what this fear mongering is. Oh God, I might get this disease. Oh fuck, I might give it to someone else. Oh, what if, what if, what if? And they're living constantly in this sympathetic nervous system. And it's a fact that no living organism on the planet can live in the fight or flight response for a consistent period of time without the immune system breaking down. And once the immune system breaks down, they're susceptible to the very first thing that comes along. So this has become a self-fulfilling prophecy. They bombard people with fear. They're living in a sympathetic nervous system as opposed to parasympathetic nervous system. So let me tell you what it is. Sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight response. You're living on constant edge of angst because you think something's going to happen every second. That's not where you should live. Where you should live is, a, is what's called homeostasis, which is the feed and breed state, which is where I'm cool and I'm calm and I'm comfortable and everything around me right now is pretty fucking good. You know? the moment so that's where we need to be and if we're in that we can cope much more so the idea of the peaceful warrior channel was some coping strategies that could put you into the feeder breed state and make you more aware of consciously aware of the fight or flight state so understand what the fight or flight response is it's a response to an emergency so when something dangerous is happening you, you know, your uh, fight or flight response, the natural biochemistry of adrenaline, your adrenal cocktail, if you like, kicks in in order to help you out of the situation that you're in that's imminently dangerous. It's a natural biochemistry. So it belongs in your conscious mind in during a time of danger. Right? We need fight or flight, but only then. But that's not where it lives. Your fight or flight response lives in your subconscious brain. And you're unaware of it. And unbeknown to you from the fucking brainwashing TV and the media and the, the newspapers and the, the silent mind control, you are bombarded consistently with your subconscious brain replaying events. What if I get this thing? What if this happens? What if that? What if that? So unknowingly, you are living in your fight or flight response. So, and it's wearing people down. And then people are getting worn down by it, catching something like the simple flu, which miraculously somehow fucking disappeared, which in my opinion is. And then getting really ill. And then blaming somebody like me. 
You know, so it, it's a self fulfilling, very, very, very brilliant, uh, psychopathically genius plan that no doubt took a long time to be put into fruition, but uh, nonetheless, it's created a self fulfilling prophecy. So the idea is well, look, elsewhere, how about taking a just fucking walk in nature? You know, how about going to the beach for the day? You know, I mean, I'm very fortunate, don't get me wrong, because during this period of time, and I'm really believing serendipity now, because I lived in the sea. And I was there for 10 years, and there was no fucking reason really that I should leave. But all of a sudden, my landlord, just out of the blue, decided, to, oh, you know, I'm going to sell the land. So uh, I moved out to the forest right before this happened. Um, it, it's been a saving grace because it's allowed me to get out in nature. But my point is, if you get out in nature and you look at the breath work out there, take deep breaths, look at the, you know, some of the great people that have looked at uh, Wim Hof, just for one example, Troy Casey for another certified health nut. They do a, a breath work. So if you can understand how to breathe properly, you can control your heart rate and you can keep yourself in the parasympathetic nervous system homeostasis that I'm talking about as opposed to angst. So whenever they say to you, oh, take a couple of deep breaths if you're feeling anxious, you know, it's, it, go deeper into it than that. We can completely control and lower our heart rate, which is the catalyst for feeling um, fight or flight state so just one thing to keep calm and less stressful would be good for your immune system would it not Coupled to that, so another thing is like the cold water therapy so it's cold showers you know, cold showers build the, um, the white blood cells and these fight immune system and they, they keep you out of the alkaline sort of method in your blood also stuff that you can eat good hydration um, clean distilled water not the fluoride shit that they've been giving you for years with a proper uh, calcifying your fucking you know, pineal gland and everything else clean water fresh air sunshine exercise preferably out in sunshine but most importantly human interaction smiles hugs cuddles from loved ones well, it's a fact that we all have an aura. We have an auric field. We have this physical body. We have a, a series of light bodies, if you like. So we have an emotional body, a spiritual body, a, a etheric body that you couldn't see. And in, in, in certain uh, camera um, uh, technology has allowed certain people to identify these auras. Well, these auras are what you feel from somebody. And we intrinsically, if we're intuitively tuned in, have it but it's been suppressed because we've been down, dampened down for so long. You can't feel my etheric field, nor can I you if we are that distant. The whole point is divide separation so you can't connect on a spiritual level. And I mean, everything seems to point to, this has all been written a long time before. So the Mayan said, you know, the end of the world in 2012, well, what that actually meant is the end of the world as we know it, this way of life, because this way of life is over whether it's new world good for us or new world fucking order for these bastards. But regardless of that, this is, we ain't never going back to normal, bruv. This is different now, right? And the fact of the matter is what they actually meant was new beginning. And, you know, within the universe of where time is a man-made construct anyway, it wasn't actually 2012, it was actually 2020. It was a later period. But what that all that was relation to, what they were talking about, was this alignment of the planets where um, Saturn aligns with um, Jupiter will elevate the density of the planet because we live in a 3D dimension. And that over a period of time also raises consciousness in other people, hence people having a spiritual awakening, of which I'm just one of many. So there's nothing, you know, mystical or mystic meg about it it's just simple evolution of consciousness people are waking up and it, it, there's just so many out there that can't there's so many out there that are so calcified uh, that you know they this, this is how i, I define my awakening right? imagine having a bucket and inside the bucket you throw in a load of shit so what's happening on big brother what the kardashians are wearing latest piece of shit well, what's going on? Who's fucking us over in the government? What's Johnson doing? Oh, what's happening in America? All this fucking crap, 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 crap in the bucket. Put your fucking head in the bucket and then put a blanket over your head. And that's their life. That's your life in a 3D world. That's it. Well, what waking up's like is like taking off that towel and looking up. And then looking around and going, hey. 
And realising in that moment, there's so fucking much more. Right? That's what waking up's like. And let me tell you how that feels. That's a lonely fucking place, bro. Because you're no longer in this three-dimensional bucket. But you're not up here yet either. You know, you're in that place of unsure. What the fuck's going on? And it's a lonely place and you've got to persevere with it. But for me, how things happen, because you meet like-minded people, you meet similar-minded people. And of course, there's so much bullshit on the media. I mean, look at what media means. Medea, queen of deception. You know, all of this has esoteric roots. All of this has demonic roots. Look at all the numerology that they're losing. Look at all the dates that they do stuff. Summer solstice, winter solstice. Look at how you got, you know, <laughs> come on, fucking work it out. Do you know what I'm saying? People are uh, calcified. You couldn't wake some of these cunts up if you sat them in a fucking seat, wired their eyes open like Clockwork Orange style, the old movie, bombarded them fucking 24 seven with images of what's really going on. And this cunt still wouldn't get it. So what do you do? You can't do fuck all. They've got to go back around again, mate. But what you'll also get is people who know something's wrong, but they're willfully ignorant. They don't want to fucking know. And they think, if I stay in my little bubble here, you know, I'm all right. Fuck it. It's not my place to tell anyone. Not my place to speak up. Of course, it's your fucking place to speak up. It's all about space to speak up if we want our freedom. So, and these people are my own people. I've lost friends, family. I'm the elephant in the room, mate. You know, they don't want to hear me talk this stuff. And, no, you know, mate, they're, they're the elephant in the room, not you. Well, they are, yeah. I mean, they think I'm crazy because of the way I think. I think individually. I think they're fucking crazy because they all think the same. So where, where do we go with that? You know, but, yeah. <laughs> well, that's... that's the awakening that's pretty much where my uc is turning i mean so uc is still about what it's about but there's a sister channel that says well look here look if you want some decompression if you want to take some time learn some breath work if you want to meditate if you want to visualize if you want to boost your immune system if you want to uh you know connect with nature if you want to just get fit strong and healthy if you want to look at a plant-based diet blah 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 it's all non-physical so it's like the yin to the yang if you like yeah it's so, become much more balanced lee our message because there'll be impressionable young men and women watching I'm always trying to get it across. Being a warrior isn't just this. It, it's it's in here. It's your it's your actions. And the biggest way to be a warrior, particularly at this moment in time, is stop following the crowd and doing what they do. Oh my word. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I never have. I've been a rebel from birth. So so they say that. They, 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 they talk about it in terms of this. They talk about it in terms of light workers and dark workers. You've heard this terminology, right? There's people here to try and raise the vibration of the planet and, the, and, and people and, and stuff. And they're considered workers for the light, right? And then you have nefarious entities, which are workers for the dark, which is, you know, any of these cunts that sold their soul for the fucking so-called elite at the top. These are the dark workers. But there's an halfway house, and the halfway house is called Grey Worker. And Grey Worker is just like, to use Jordan Peterson's analogy, he talks about Harry Potter. And he says, Harry Potter is this, you know, the bright wizard that, you know, is for the light. But the reason he's effective is that he's been touched by malevolence. He's been touched by malevolence to the fact so he knows evil. And because he knows evil, he can stand against the evil to protect the light. Does that make sense? So if you have a light worker, people that are so great and good and want to do good, well, mm, there's a fine line with that because it's not, if you can't say no, then you can't say no. And if you can't say fuck off and make a stand, then you can't say fuck off and make a stand. And although you stand for the light, you're vulnerable to dark entities. So you need the gray worker. And the gray worker is stands for the light no matter what maybe 70 30 maybe 60 40 but he fucking knows malevolence and he's willing to stand in front of it he's primarily a benevolent soul but knows malevolence because he's been touched by it well i've been touched by it all my fucking life and i learned many things very early on 
People only treat you the way you let them. Sometimes you've got to put a fucking stall out. And modern man, so-called modern man anyway, has been pacified through the last several decades, primarily through probably the food chain, the, 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 the fucked with the water, the fuck with the air, the soil. Everything has been geared towards dampening you down. And now you've ended up with these beta soy boys. You know, and social conditioning has also maximized this to the point where even women have took part, where, you know, it's, it's no longer hip or trend for the hunter gatherer type person to take care of his family, you know, and oh, God forbid, if you stand up and bark and get aggressive in any sense or stand up for anything, it's been bled out, social conditioning, all part of the program, right? So the likes of me, you know, you fucking old school, who, uh, when they're gone, they're gone. You know, it goes much deeper. They look at breaking down the family unit and making this separation and making all this confusion with gender and what you are and everything else. And it's just carnage. It's fucking chaos. Now, you'll no doubt you'll get loads of little boy, uh, beta soy boys jumping on air, fucking barking at me and all the rest of it and saying, oh, this, and I'm offended. Well, I would like to apologise to absolutely fucking nobody because, you know, man up and <laughs> wear your big boy pants because all I'm doing is telling the truth. As I see it. Yeah, they don't understand that they're, they're buying into an agenda that doesn't have their interests at heart. Oh, no, God, no, it doesn't. Follow the money, for fuck's sake. Follow the money. I mean, a so-called failed track and trace. Do you know how many billions that's made? I mean, let alone anything else. Let alone these PPE deals that have been done with China from where it all started. I mean, don't start me off with that. But, the, I mean, getting back to what makes... Somebody of decent skin, a stand-up soul, call it a warrior, call it what you want. Yeah, the physical part is necessary, you know, but it's only necessary in order to stand against the nefarious. That's what it's necessary for. So you know, people see my stuff, they think I'm, I'm a, a, a thug. They think I'm a fucking, you know, violent thug. Well, I am a violent thug, but with an education which means I understand where it belongs. So the difference between the kind of street folk that you'd see you know, nowadays, bearing in mind that during all these lockdown periods, they've been letting, out, letting uh, a shitload of Im immigrants into the country, many of which are fucking the worst of the worst and nefarious. But let's talk about that kind of person. What, that kind of person that has you know, got nothing to lose and will use an extreme level of violence for nefarious reasons. I mean, that's an extremely ugly sight. Yes, it is. But if you caught on video somebody like me having to fight for their life in order to deal with that person, well, they'd be getting fucked up. And what you'd be seeing would be an extreme level of violence that would indeed be mm, repugnant. The only difference in the two levels of violence which look the same is reason. Because this can't hurt me because he's been paid to or told to, or given a free pass to, or because he can, or because he forgot his medication, or because he don't like to cut him a jib, whatever. Trivial reason. Because he's socially conditioned that violence, life's cheap, and he's nothing. In fact, his mates a video on their phone and they share it for likes. That's the, the, the thing, right? Whereas I use a savage level of violence because I was a cornered animal and there was no other choice. And because I'm too important to lose. Not too important in the hot shit sense, but too important in the sense that there's too many people I love and I need, and they need me. I ain't leaving them. You know, there's too many things I ain't done yet. Fuck you if you're taking me. Too many people need me and I need them. So the difference really comes down to is these people will use violence and hate for what they hate stood in front of them. Whereas I use violence in order to protect what I love stood behind me. Does that make sense? So it's the difference. Context always dictates content. Yes, I'm capable of extreme level of fucking violence. And I know why now. I know why that this vehicle is here. I now believe that this was my you know, destiny to be here. They say that many of these type of light workers fucking even volunteered from past life. I don't know why you would, but apparently I put my hand up. And I believe that I am here as part, a very tiny, minute part of trying to help wake others up, and my vehicle just happens to be the combatives. 
And I've always felt, because I'm not by my own admission, but I'm considered one of the top people in this field. And I've always considered that amazing, an amazing shock, if anything else, amazing surprise to me, because there's so many things I'm shit at. But this I know, and this I can do in, the, in a combative in a teaching sense. And it's almost like I'm that good at it that something else has been working through me. If that makes sense. That's all, really how I feel. And where it's what the heart, the people it's touched the most are younger guys, you know, between like late teen years into the early 30s that struggle with insecurity, that have struggled with addictions, that struggle with blah, 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 whatever, with violence, with being aggressive not being able to stand up for themselves and it's really helped that kind of thing and the uc has built a great community of warriors that are capable physically but equally capable of you know love kindness empathy for their fellow mm -hmm. human being and that to me is what a warrior is it's like that warrior poet peaceful warrior there's no front without back and eventually you transcend the physical you know, the physical is just a vehicle as you get through closer to the summit the ultimate victory is is that you don't need violence to to win you know you do it with compassion and care and just reframing of perspective but that's not always plausible some people mistake kindness for weakness in which case you gotta fucking educate them you know why is it then lee that why did why why do some of us wake up and reject the matrix and what is it that i mean obviously i've got my own theories on it but but i'm asked to, to put it to you what and why is it that some people are just i don't want to sound like i'm knocking them because here's the thing right these satanists whether they be the sub Sabatian, Frankist cult, the, the Luminati, the, the high level masonry. I mean, high level, not folks. This yeah, yeah, nonsense that goes on in the in the Masonic lodge. Um, uh, the the celebrities that have all fucking jumped on board to yeah. to, 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 mm -hmm. to take their their, in their hand. <laughs> what was it? Their bloody. 10 gold pieces or whatever. Yeah. Right? Well, here's the thing. They've decided that they are of a higher ilk than the general population. And here's the Just thing again. Fucking food resource. That's all we are to them. Yeah. But here's the thing again, Lee, right? With all what we've just talked about, and you look at the level of unenlightenment in the global population. I mean, it's everywhere. Everyone's doing the same thing, right? With no thinking involved whatsoever, right? But why is it that you and I, rather than go to the dark side, you know, we stick, we, we stick, we, well, we, at least we try and stick doing the right thing. What, what do you think that's about? So what are you talking about? Those that have sold their soul to it, you yeah. Know, the ones you I, talk about, yes, it's well, they're like you say, it was all glittered in front of them, ten shiny bits of gold. I mean, the majority of them that you see that have re regretted what they've done, or either ended up dead inside prison, or uh, you know, completely just blacklisted for life destroyed by these people and then you got those that love it you know the uh john travolta's and the tom cruises of the world they fucking love it yeah. and then you've got those that are just in it and can't get out of it for whatever probably dangled a bit of glitter and were greedy i guess but in terms of normal so-called normal people i think a, a massive amount of it including to what potentially celebrities and beyond have uh, you know, chosen to take that, started from early indoctrination because it's bred from school, then college and university, which is then the education system they control. And then if you take any field of endeavor, so medical industry, uh, dentistry, veterinary, they control 
which means they control the curriculum of what's taught. If you go into law enforcement, into military and high level security, the curriculum is controlled by them, as is banking, as is everything in anything. So they own the fucking lot, right? And then there's the basement, which is us. And we are bombarded and constantly indoctrinated with what you should seek in method many and all fame and fortune and you know, stepping up on this guy's head to get to that level. It's it's indoctrinated that that's how it is. And it's indoctrinated that it's a, it's a struggle. So we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be the most intelligent living beings on the planet. Yet how come we're the only living beings that have to fucking pay to eat, shelter and live? That doesn't make any fucking sense because every other organism on the planet is an ecosystem that helps each other. And that's what we should be. We should be an ecosystem. But some greedy little people, very long time ago, some greedy little bloodlines of families, decided that weren't having that that way. And they turned us an ecosystem into an ego system. And in an ego system, that develops the me, 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 more me attitude which many, if they want fame, fortune, be it through sports, a high level sport, all owned by them, music industry, all owned by them, Hollywood film industry, all owned by them. Notice how Hollywood has taken a plummet because all the subliminal messages in the movies, in the mind control, it's been done now, they don't need it anymore. But all of that, what you're, those you speak have sold their soul for, it's probably started from indoctrination and greed. And then they just got caught up in it and then were compromised because many of these people, I mean, you say about the, the 33 levels, 33 level um, Freemasons and beyond, if there is beyond that. And then you've got Freemasons downward. Well, they all take the same oath. The oath is exactly the fucking same, which says, if I ever breach by words, you know, may my body be severed in half, may my bowels be spread across the lawn. I mean, they all take that oath, no matter what, whether it's your local MP, who's all be Freemasons, as are all the cops, all Freemasons, right? The high level ones. They all take that oath. Now, my question to you would be, why do I want to join a secret organization where I've got to keep stum and if I don't, I'll end up cutting off? That should tell you something about, he, it's a big red lie, a big red flag for me. Maybe that's not for me, so I won't do it. Yeah, people do it anyway. Do you know what I mean? Well, where's it going from there? It's not going anywhere good, is it? You're not just standing there with one hand over your eye and your trouser leg rolled up. It goes beyond that. And oh, massively, people, massively. And people are encouraged to take part in what that goes beyond and then are compromised by blackmail. So we all know, you know, how that works. What makes them do it? Uh, greed, um, deception, and misconception of what they think they should be. That would be my answer to why do people sell their soul? And maybe no belief whatsoever in anything else. They've got no spiritual, they've been dumbed down so much, they've got no spiritual uh, plausibility to feel. So, I mean, fluoride alone. I mean, it's fucking dangerous. If they looked at, they took out the pineal gland of, a, of, a, of an autopsy patient and of some years, and it was calcified like bone. Mm. It should be like a gummy bit. That's what it should be like. I mean, a pineal gland is just a structured gland in your brain, and it's, it, it, it's called through Egyptian times and anything else, the, the third eye. And it's not third eye as in a sense like Cyclops and you're looking like you see with your binocular vision. It's not that. It's a more intuitive eye. It gives you insight. It allows you to tune in. It allows you to suss people and situations and weigh up choices through feeling. So like Shaman said, you know, good feel with your heart. It lets yeah. you um, suss good energy and dark energy, doesn't it, I think? Yes. So it makes you much more intuitive to be and perceptive to picking up dark energy and light energy, just as you said. Perfect. Right. But that's been dumbed down in us. Dumbed down in us. And anyone who has that little intrinsic all thought process, because any child has it. All animals, fifth dimension. All children before the age of seven have that fifth dimensional capability. It goes way beyond that for some. But they say, what did the Jesuits say? Give me a child before the age of seven, I'll make him a king. Or make him anything you want me to make him. Because after the age of seven, your imagination is dampened down. 
and that's maximized with the, what's in the air, what's in the food, what's in the water. And fluoride in particular is known to calcify your pineal gland. But most dentists that you go to, you go to a dentist, you're forced to go to a dentist now. And you say, well, I don't want no fluoride. Ooh, well, I've heard that a lot recently. Why is that? Well, all you know from dental school, what you've been indoctrinated and told is that fluoride's good. But fluoride's not good. There's no proven thing that's good for your teeth. It's fucking bad. It's got poison in it. Do your fucking research. Mm-hmm. And you're putting this in now, pumping this shit into our water. You know, it was a byproduct of a hazardous product that they needed to get rid of. And then they thought, well, how can we get rid of it? Oh, I know. Let's pump it in the fucking water supply. We intend to fuck them over anyway. Because we all know that this is this is all about depopulation. This ain't about fuck all else. You know? What do you think the depopulation thing's about? Do you, do you think that the psychopaths have realised that if they let the rabble, the, the, the useless eaters continue to, you know, fornicate and, and destroy the planet, it's going to be a, a shithole for everybody. Mm. Um, yeah. they, they want their one world order, don't they? They, they, want, they want a middle class that's just appeasing brainwash. They're going to do all the dirty work. They want a lower class that's like your, your pros in... in this legendary book that I encourage everyone to... Yeah, George Orwell, yeah. You know, to, to, to Look, it comes read. down to two things, two simple things, right? Depopulation and transhumanism. The depopulation is because they don't need us no more. Everything they've done, we served our purpose. We're superfluous. They're not bothered about us continuing to, to shit up the planet. They shit up the planet. They've done it. It's not us collectively. It's them. You know, they bump the king trails into the fucking thing. They've done it. They've done all those things. Depopulation, they want, they want what well, is documented. You've got Boris Johnson's father talking about it on an interview. You've got Johnson talking about it on an interview. You've got uh, the uh, um, members of royalty talking about it. Other fuckers talking about how Bill Gates talking about how we should go from 6.8 billion people down to something like 15 million. I mean, that would be the ideal. That's the way they were fucking chatting. And they talk about this publicly because the devil likes the globe. Everything they've been telling us is, is out there. I mean, 1984, the book by George Orwell was just one example of a written tone. There's others. And they've been telling us in film what they're going to do for a long, long time. And their idea is if you don't see it because you're too fucking calcified in your brain because we doused you down too much and you don't see it, well, that's acquiescence. And their sick world. Oh, you've agreed then. And because they've got all the little gatekeepers to do everything, so all the NHS workers administering this are all gatekeepers. They're not getting their own hands dirty. They're getting others to do it. All the cops that are running in and beating on instant protesters, they're not getting their own hands dirty. They're getting others to do it. So they're bypassing their karmic debt. That's what they believe. Right? But there's a, even though it's as sick as fuck as it is, there's, um, there's, there seems to be rules to it. And the rules to it are that whatever they're telling you, which they've been telling you for a long time in film, is the most probable conclusion. And if you look at a lot of things, the majority of films that were shown, these showing us these all sorts of things, like Terminator as an example, showing you the moment that AI becomes aware that it's more fucking capable than the rest of humanity and it doesn't need it anymore. I mean, all of these things that they've been telling you finished with, a, a, with light shining over dark, they finished with good prevailing over evil. They rarely finished with evil conquering. It usually, finished, it usually depicted as the light shines the dark. Does that make sense? So in some way, they've got a code. They've got a code of contact. If you, if you, if you look more into it, I'd seriously recommend that you look at the works of Mark Passio, and particularly when he talks about... Um, natural law, also symbolism, the way they've been showing us in symbolism. He also did the Matrix trilogy, which was the three Matrix films, which weren't a film, which Ike said is a fucking documentary. Right, so to look at that kind of stuff, but basically, we're little fucking work ants. We were bred as a fucking slave race to do whatever, to get to a certain point. And now, however they've advanced the technology that they've got so quickly, um, without going there, but they are at least 150 years more more advanced than the technology that they give us, right? 
they damped it down. There's free energy. They stole it from Tesla and sent him on his way packing, didn't they? You know, we all know that he was taken out and just free energy alone, they've got the capability for that forever. They've, they've always had it. But they make us pay for energy, which should be free. You know, if you look at micro or uh, macro supplements or micro supplements rather, micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, now, vitamins and minerals with an FDA regu uh, regu um, regulation and recommendation are such minute, pitiful doses that they won't do anything. You can literally take just magnesium, which is you know, good, uh, something to take in addition to other things for boosting your immune system. The amount that they give you is minute, what's recommended. You could take five times that amount and be fine. Same with various other things. Do your own research. Don't listen to me. You could. But they've damped down the amount so that people take supplementation and go, mm, yeah, it's all right, as long as everything else is, you know. They don't put any faith in it. Because if they put faith into natural things like that, what would happen to Big Pharma? Big Pharma would take a drop. So it's all about money control, full of money. It's all about that. But now, I believe, it comes down to two simple things. One, they've got to where they need to be. So we're superfluous. And two, so then it's a depopulation. And two, it's all about this, this transhumanism thing is a reality, you know? I mean, people go, oh, Tracer, what's he talking about? Oh, cyborgs and all the rest of it. Well, look, I'm at a hip replacement, a left hip replacement a year ago. 97% as good as I was, went private. The titanium alloy with a ceramic plate at the top. Just for me, having that in my body is a form of transhumanism. It's a form of that, right? Because it's a foreign body making me capable. Well, they've gone much, much higher, obviously, because they want to connect the internet into your head. So AI, advanced learning technology, well, what you'll become then will be controlled by AI, by artificial intelligence. And the first thing it will shut down is your spiritual consciousness. We'll take that because that's not necessary. So what they're looking to create is a load of little transports slaves that do whatever their bidding is and that i would say is what it is i mean look at the story of ike however much you followed him right there's there's one but he's made loads one like this called the answer if you have the guy channel when you look at escaping the matrix watch that whole season right it's 11 episodes about 30 minutes long each if you look at a series deep space so season two, Deep Space, 11 episodes, right? There are 30 minutes each. It tells you from episode one to episode 11, when it finishes, everything that's been happening, all in one place. So it goes right back to before World War II, post-World War II, paperclip, all the rest of it, everything through the Cuban Missile Crisis, right up to modern-day AI, right up to now. And you look at that, you watch all of that, you tell me you don't see commonality and thread. You know, if you don't, well, I've got nothing to say to you. There's nothing I can do for you. You're already lost. But they've been telling us this shit for a long, long period of time. Basically, what that's telling you is human beings are superfluous to needs. That's why it started breaking it down. Because, like, in your dad's day, my dad's day, my granddad's day, a family unit was strong. You know, well, in my day, my mum was on her own. But in my father's generation, grandfather's generation, you know, the dad, the sons, the mum, the family unit, strongest energy of all, highest vibration of love of all. Highest vibration on the planet is love. Destroys fear. This is about vibration, thinking energy and vibration. All right? They want to break that down. So what did they do? They disrupted it. So the first person to go was the father, the male figure in a family. And you had lots of breakdown. Women without control, kids couldn't control them. They went to drink and other things, couldn't give a fuck about what the kids did. Kids went off, got involved with similar kids, made trouble, da, da, da. You can see the carnage because it, the, the father strong backbone type figure was taken out. So in your grandfather's generation, it was you, you, your dad, then your brothers, then your peers at school. And then maybe you left school when you went to work with an old boy for a little while, trained you for 12 months, you know, to be a, do this job. Maybe there was some national service and, from there. And there was backbone, there was structure. First thing to go was that. 
Then they started fucking with it, with confusing the shit out of people with genders, adding all these fucking letters after the fucking whatever. I don't even know what they are. But what are you today? Oh, little Johnny, what do you want to wear a dress or do you want to fuck off with that shit? There's people like me that will never fucking accept that ever, that sick, twisted fuck shit. They even want to put a P at the end of that line of letters, whatever the fuck it is, P for paedophilia. They're trying to tell you that paedophilia is a natural sexual orientation. It should be accepted. You know, these cunts have even made a fucking manual for paedophiles on how not to violate an under eight year old too badly. Mm. Or shit you not. It's outrageous. Now they own all the corporate, big massive corporations. Big massive corporations. Just look at Amazon. So on Amazon, Somebody screenshotted me a little sequin dress for a four-year-old, five-year-old girl. And on it, it says, Grandpa's little cum slut. How the fuck is that all right? How's that all right? What happened? Did I miss the fucking memo? What? You know? Stuff like that. And then people were up in arms, said things about it. Oh, I'm sorry, but it actually doesn't breach how... No one recently selling you, selling a, um, a little kid holding a vase of flowers. And the vase of flowers is 4,000 pounds. They ain't selling the vase of flowers, right? So anyone goes on there and it's a vase of flowers, anyone pays the money that's not in the know in the circle gets the vase for four grand if they're stupid. But anyone in the know gets more than the vase of flowers. Didn't I say any more? So this is out here in plain sight. And it's almost like this to me, it's almost like, Let's bombard these cunts with all this fucking information and let's just see how many of them put their hand up or how many of them just go, oh yeah, nothing to do with me. And it's almost like there is a competition between the dark and the light. So let's say that's, uh, I don't know, the, the devil and whatever your God is, right? So for me, God is source. God is the divine universe and, and nature. That's, that's whatever made us. Because if you, broke everything down to, to micro, 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 micro atoms, cells within cells within cells within cells, you eventually come down to a substance that's the same in me as you, the same in us as those plants, the same in us as those trees, the same in us as those rocks, same in us as those animals. We all come from the same nanoparticles, life. And that's from source. It's not a man to me, but whatever it is to you, imagine God and the dark, Satan, whatever, evil, devil, even if that's been inverted, all right? And it's like they're over a chest vein like this. Right, well, let's throw all this propaganda down there at them in their little buckets, and let's see which one goes, fuck that, and climbs out of the bucket. Now, anyone that climbs out and fucks that out of the bucket, that's yours, God. And any other cunts left in the bucket, they're all mine, deal? It's, it's like that. And they are bombarding you with so much crazy shit that your ancestors would be fucking wheel spinning in the fucking rave if they could hear it. And that's how it seems to me. It seems so crazy. It almost seems like the outcome's already sorted. We're just sorting the wheat from the chap. You know what I mean? Oh, I've got a question for you then, Lee. You, I know you've worked with a lot of, let's just say, elite forces. I have done, yeah. How do you get military to understand that by keeping their heads in the sand, all their comrades who went before, who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, all those yeah. fucking 14-year-old, some of them, in the First World War that went over the top, 14, 15 children wiped out in hundreds of thousands believing it was for our future right uh, you know no, it was it was right? all manifested by them all war. yeah well we understand that those of, those of us that understand the elite bloodlines and the banking families we we got a better angle on it but what i'm trying to say is how 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 do you wake up these individuals to yeah. stop supporting this this sick and twisted agenda the only way would be for them to see what we see now i'm not saying that they all they all don't 
because I've had conversations with some really quite significant individuals within that field that have said, my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather all fought for our freedom. And that's why I do this. I fight for, their, for our freedom. And I will stand against any foreign or domestic terrorist to protect our freedom, the freedom of the people, of our land, of our right to prosper. And they believe that. And I do believe that they are starting, well, this particular individual, starting to see that this ain't what it fucking was made out to be. And that the biggest enemy of all in terms of terrorists could be the domestic terrorist that we face that supposedly controls us. And they are seeing it. And I know for sure that this particular individual that belongs to this particular fraction will stand on the fucking chest of tyranny, let's say that. So I do believe there are those that will stand and will turn. But here's the thing. If you look at everything that's controlled, so people don't realize that the, the, the silent minority, the families that have total anonymity, so there are those beyond Rockefellers and Rothschilds that have total anonymity at the top. And then you've got the ones that you know of and the monarchy and all the rest of it. And then you've got the billionaire investors and then it goes down and down and down. But right at the top, there's those that you don't even know about. And they control everything. So they control the entire education system. Regardless of what field there is, they control that and what's taught. And that includes law enforcement and military. Uh, it includes medical, it includes dentistry, it includes normal education, it includes everything, banking, finance, you name it. But within what's taught in the military sense and the, the technology that they employ, that from a very um, early start in the career, this MK Ultra shit's being used. This this brainwashing fucking tactics of indoctrinating into them follow without question is rife. And if the sheep that are wearing the mask are calcified about what's going on, then trust me when I tell you, the gatekeepers that are following blindly are also calcified to what's going on. Mm. And what that means is, is that they're your enemy. <laughs> you, you, you're not you, you're not going to be able to, to sway their thinking I mean you look at these just some of the cops alone and like there's women crying to them for their children saying you must have children and their eyes are black their eyes are just dead they're just like you're not getting in you're not getting through so a lot of it I would say is that you know there's not all but a lot now the key is Obviously, more and more people waking up on the planet. The vibration of the planet is raising regardless. Eventually, everybody will wake up, even if it's gone right through to the worst of the worst. Eventually, there'll be a point. But if there is a tipping point where there's actually a stand made within military and law enforcement as well with the people, they choose to stand with the people, then, you know, of course, we've got a fucking good chance of dealing with this. But that's a big if, and that's a whether that will happen or not. You know, I honestly believe in my heart that there will be a tipping point to this. And like I said, in film, they've been telling you outcomes for a long time. So you ever see the film V for Vendetta? If you see the film V for Vendetta, right at the end, when you see the people coming for the government. As one example, bearing in mind, government are like third floor in this big pyramid, but they're the start point for sure. Um, and then you've got the gatekeepers, which are the cops in front. And then you've just got people walking through the cops because the cops are just not moving. It's almost like there's a realisation. Now, that's what we need. That's what we need, right? But the way I see it is they will take this propaganda, whatever it is, whether it's factual propaganda, I believe it's propaganda. I believe they're bumming it at us to just make us wake up. I mean, like that ridiculous clause that they're trying to put into schools, which they talking about very quietly. It's got a certain name, and I can't remember it. But it's the clause where uh, any children over the age of 12 can be without a parent's consent. And now they're trying to get that. Any children under the age of 12, under the age downwards, seven below. Now, if they get that, I mean, that's just, I would think that, that would tip the point for a fucking uprising, particularly if you know, it's damaging to these, to, to these people, but to these kids. But I digress. You see, 
I see when people finally get to the point where they've had enough, because if there's probably most likely going to be another lockdown, and if there's another people, you know, even the ones that have been following blindly will start to spit the dummy, and I reckon that there will be a turning point. But how I see it, I kind of saw it in the visualisation. And I imagine looking down like this, like a bird's eye view at the masses. And what I'm looking at, it looks like just hundreds of thousands of people. And all like little ants screwing around, going about their daily business. And all of a sudden, there's, they stop. And then they look up. And as they look up, they take the fucking off. And then they look at each other and go, what? That's how I see it. That's how I see them waking up, right? But like I said, you can sit them down and fucking pull their eyes open and bombard them with images and some of them still wouldn't get it. So it needs the tipping point to come. But I honestly believe it's coming. And I do believe that more and more is happening. I mean, everybody that follows mainstream media is getting a crock of shit. This is so deceptive right now. So much deception to this right now. There's modicums of truth, but this is just designed to disrail you in any way shape or form you cannot get a grain or a thread of logic so my first thing i would say is for two reasons one turn the fucking telly off turn your fucking media off research elsewhere to other platforms if you want but turn mainstream off because they're all part of it they're all owned by it and if you do that you get yourself out of that fear-mongering state you know and do something else you know to get, go for a forest bay forest walk meditate breathe eat good fucking hydrate you know spend some time with those you care about though you love decompress get yourself back in that you know um feed and breed homeostasis where we should be thriving give yourself that brain space so pause so that you can think again logically and look at anything that you're given. Don't just blindly believe it because some cunt believes it and you want to be part of that and not fucking stand up. Look at it anatomically with your head, with, if you can, you know, a high level of intelligence or as high as your capacity will allow, but critically thinking, looking at this, and then go straight to your instinct. How does that feel to me? And then finally, what does this say? If there's anything left in this, for these sad souls... I would go with that, regardless of what the outcome is. Because if you feel it in your heart, your heart ain't going to lie. Your heart's true, you know? But the tipping point, I do, I do believe is coming. And I do believe that a lot of what you're hearing is, is a part of that design to, to try and wake the masses up. That's not to say that we're not in dire straits. You know, we're in a, we're in a fucking shitty situation now. And people do need to stand up and find the backbone. But they're what we need. We need the gatekeepers. We need yes, the gatekeepers yes. to stand up. Right. Hey, we're going to put all your links below, brother. Make sure that everyone gets gets. You know, they can they can contact you and they can get more information and yeah. um, brush up their their skills. It might have been a little bit candid for you, but you can always edit. Yeah, no, no, no. We're good, mate. We're good. Um, all right. Just, Lee, stay on the line so I can thank you properly, but for the purposes of the interview, <laughs> uh, massive thank you, mate. Really yeah. keep, keep up the good fight because, remember, they're the fucking elephant in the room, mate, not, not, not us. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, we don't well, need yeah, to, know that. Yeah. We, we don't need to explain yeah, ourselves, and, and there's many others like us now. To our you, friend, can't, you can't explain yourself to fucking morons, can you, really? Some people are just <laughs> never going to get it. No. To our friends at home, massive love to you all. If you could please like and subscribe, that's going to help. Check out Lee's links below the video and we'll see you next time. Thank you.